Maradona, from the stand, you could not even see his legs because he was so fast. I like purkled. Purkled? <laughs> For sure, I like uh, very much all kinds of soups. So hello, Mr. Captain. Hello, Marco again. It's good to have you with me and uh, thank you for taking the time. Uh, last time we had the chance to talk about more about the professional work of yours, but now today I would like to talk a little bit about Marco Rossi. Uh, basically, the I would say the adopted Hungarian, because that's what I've heard, that uh, you feel a little bit adopted uh, as a Hungarian, obviously, uh, you know, coming from Italy and being Italian. Is this true? Yes, yes. I, I really feel well when I'm here in Budapest and I'm spending a lot of uh, my time here. I mean, in a year, mm -hmm. three quarter of the year I, I'm here, so yeah. I'm living much more in Hungary. You, you should, Italy. I mean, it wouldn't be necessary to spend that much time, right? If, if it, it was it just would, about the work. It wouldn't uh, be necessary, but uh, my opinion is that uh, you need to to show to everybody that you are doing your job in the best way as possible. Mm -hmm. You need to show the respect that you need to have for the country that is giving to you this important position mm -hmm. in your job. So it could be not necessary because, you know, with the modern technologies, we could, we could watch the matches uh, by laptop, by television. Even, even like, if you were in Italy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Just like we are doing from all our players playing abroad, especially mm -hmm. in this uh, situation of pandemic. Right. But I think that uh, for the Hungarians that are playing in Hungary, it's important to, to watch them live. And this is the reason because I'm living here and I'm asking to my colleagues, the Italian ones, mm -hmm to live here with me because we need to be wow. absolutely professional and right. respectful of and they, this country. And they are dedicated enough to, to stay with you in Hungary, to live Absolutely. Well. Wow. They, they need nice. to be. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise they wouldn't be your colleagues, I suppose. <laughs> no, I'm not a dictator, but uh, you know, they are committed like me. They, they, they understand very well what does it mean being been part of the technical staff mm -hmm. in the right. Hungarian national team. Right. So, uh, well, obviously, as you said, since uh, I would say 2013 or 2012, you have the chance to, to get used to, to adopt a little bit to the Hungarian lifestyle. Uh, people say, f coming from abroad, that we Hungarians are driving terribly. <laughs> <laughs> Especially compared to Italians who have the real sense to, you know, to drive in a very intensive uh, way. So what do you think about that? How do we drive? I think that uh, when you are uh, used to drive above all in the uh, south of Italy, right. the southern part of Italy, <laughs> and uh, you are uh, driving in Napoli, like in, I don't know, in Sicily, mm -hmm. like in Rome too. Right. You could even drive in the moon, <laughs> the moon, because the it's basically crazy. you're, tra you're you can, trained to the worst, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you cannot compare. The Hungarians are much more disciplined than the Italians oh, under well, this aspect. Really? There is. You cannot compare. You already uh, mentioned the southern Italy, Sicily, and, and Naples, of course, which I think was a, a very important part of your of your, of your young ages, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about the past in that sense, uh, especially because uh, the years that you had a chance to uh, to play uh, in in one of the uh, third division teams, right, in yeah. in, uh, uh, in Naples, that it was the era, a very important era of of basically the the first uh, squad of, of Naples. It was the era of Maradona. Yeah. yeah. yeah How do was... you remember that? Yeah, it was a very, very nice period also because I was extremely young. <laughs> I was <laughs> 20 years old and uh -huh. I moved for the first time far from Torino uh -huh. to the south of the country, to Napoli. And in that period it was not so easy because, uh, you know, 
in the north side of the country, many, many people at that time was not so open to go in the south. Mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. I decided to go because of uh, my career. My, mm -hmm. I was a professional. It was, it was really such a major difference uh, back then between no, the northern and the southern part no, of no, Italy. No, 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 there was no difference. In the south of the country, you could live absolutely in a very, very nice way. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy the food, you can enjoy life, life with and the relationship with people. And But, you know, there were some, uh, uh, how can I say, bad uh, thoughts about the south, especially from people that never travel in his life. Uh -huh. So, and uh, in Italy, from since a lot of time, also due to the politics, to social, economical reason, there is this kind of difference between north, north and south of the of right. the country. And but I have to say, I I was born in the north, and I'm living. I spend a lot of my lifetime in the south. Mm -hmm. From, but what with the northern mentality was it was it sort of difficult to adjust to, to, no, to no, the no. southern lifestyle? For side? someone that is born in the north of the country, is much is much more easy to to adapt himself in the south. As if as if back the it's, the, it's, the reverse uh -huh. the opposite is quite it's difficult. quite difficult. It's one. Wow. Because That's you know in the south there is the weather the sea, the sunshine. The livelihood of the yeah, people. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have to say that I, I enjoy much more the lifestyle of the south of the country. <laughs> okay, and especially I think, uh, uh, you know, to that period, uh, probably Maradona's presence uh, gave an extra, extra added value uh, to that city and especially to the, uh, you know, the, the football uh, yeah, of, yeah. of the Naples. So how do you remember? I remember very well there was a, in the city uh, a quite a ex exciting environment mm -hmm. and, uh, and people really is in love. Napoli is a city that is in love of football, but with Maradona was, uh, was really something that uh, you cannot believe if you, if you are not living. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah. if you're not there, you wouldn't believe what happened, no. right? I was, I remember that I went for the first match because, yeah, I, I was playing in a third division team mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, July, if I remember well, or August, maybe August, August, and the Napoli played the first match in the Italy Cup against the third division team. Okay. I remember was the year was 1984 and Napoli played against uh, Casertana uh -huh. that is a club is a squad uh, of a city near to Napoli that is Caserta, Caserta. the name of the city and uh, yeah Maradona you from the stand you could not even see his legs because he was so fast, so quick in moving. Really? Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was At like least, a ca cartoon figure, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. Was uh, Maradona <laughs> was, I, I, you know, I, I had the uh, luck to play against uh, the best player in, of that era in Italy, mm -hmm. afterwards, sure. Right. But uh, I have to say that like, like Maradona, I never seen nobody, not even Ronaldo, Nazario da Lima, the first Ronaldo. Right. Not this one. Right. Not even uh, that Ronaldo. That was another very uh, sad uh, loss uh, yeah, uh, from a famous but, Italian, Paolo Rossi. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, Paolo, Paolo Rossi is uh, the maybe the most uh, f famous Italian football player of the last uh, 40, 50 years because, right. you know, he was the top scorer in the 1982 when Italy was world champion right and uh, yeah Paolo Rossi he's he he's known and he was known all over the world all over Europe above all but all, all over the world right and uh, 
he's a uh, okay for him is another uh, is a different history mm -hmm. but uh, what he has in common with Maradona was that also him was a very very nice person mm -hmm. as a personality yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a strong personality but a very nice person very uh, a person open open to to help mm -hmm. according to his possibilities you know right. but uh, to help all all the others you know on all the people with who he, he had contacts mm -hmm. and all also about him all his all teammates are talking the same about him that was absolutely a very nice person nice person big friend that's basically what but my belief is that that to become a real superstar superheroes of football uh, it's not enough to be great uh, to be a great talent it's not enough to uh, practice a lot you, you really need to have a, a personality and also a good heart so if, if you look at uh, I would say the, the real superstars of, of football in the last many many decades uh, then who would be the absolutely number ones in the top three for you ever even even you know counting the uh, the present days well, I have to say that uh, in football there were in the last uh, decades a lot a lot a lot of uh, really how can I say top uh, top players Top personalities, players and champions recognized all, all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say one name, only one name, but for instance, it coming to my mind, for instance, from because he's Italian, Roberto Baggio. Roberto mm -hmm. Baggio is another icon, or, a real icon. icon. Yeah, and mm -hmm. everybody loves him in Italy. What about what about Ronaldo? Uh, not Cristiano, but you know that uh, the Brazilian you, you mentioned before, and and uh, Johan Cruyff. And I've I've heard that you also had a chance to to basically meet these people. Yeah, yeah. I played I played against uh, Ronaldo mm -hmm. when he came in Italy in the first season. That was in the year. 1997 and then he played uh, afterwards mm -hmm. but the first year was 1997 mm -hmm. and um, yeah I think that uh, until that moment after Maradona I never seen someone like him <laughs> he was unbelievable technical player so fast, so quick, you cannot, you could never advance him, even if he gave to you his shoulder, he was able to turn with the control in the ball and with, it, with his speed was able to, to go to the ball. It was unbelievable, something <laughs> that I never, I never found before, uh -huh. only with Maradona, but again, Against Maradona, I never played because mm -hmm. you played in yes. first division yes, and yes, I was yes, yes. only in the third or second. But I played against uh, against Ronaldo, mm -hmm. and also at the beginning of my career, I played against uh, Joan Cruyff mm -hmm. in the last match of his career. Mm -hmm. There was a friendly match uh, between uh, Torino and. Uh, now I don't remember if it was PSV or or uh, or an, another Holland team. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name, but I remember very well him, mm -hmm. and I remember very well what uh, what uh, one of my teammates said. Is my telephone is ringing? It, is it? <laughs> Did you, so you have I to pick. I mean. You, you have a lot of work to do, so you can no, pick no, it up, no, no I problem. Can switch, <laughs> switch is my brother, so he can wait. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, one of my teammates, because I was in the bench, mm -hmm. and one of my teammates that was generally in the starting 11, one mm -hmm. of the most important players of Torino, said to me, look, 
you are at the beginning of your career. But if you are looking at him, you have to stop your career now because you can never reach <laughs> his level. He right. was at the end right. of his career with both legs uh, absolutely not uh, healthy because it, yeah, he was injured. he yeah, was right. injured mm -hmm. both legs and he was and able still. and he still was able to give unbelievable passes, unbelievable assists. Fantastic. Fantastic. He was um, another unbelievable player. Right. Marco, I think it was something really brave, I would say, that uh, in that time when basically all, you know, uh, players coming from other countries wanted to play in the Italian Serie A, uh, then you made a brave decision to, to actually to travel abroad and to go to Mexico and also to the, to the German Championship, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which I really wonder how, what kind of experiences uh, were those, uh, especially when you had a chance to play in the uh, Stadio Azteca, which is, uh, I think, it a was, very emblematic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, one of the best best decision <laughs> in my best choices in my in my career as a player, mm -hmm. because okay, I was uh, 30, 31 years old. And I decided, uh, I had a good contract with the Sampdoria, still mm -hmm. two years contract, but I prefer to go to Mexico because I, I felt the, the desire to have a different experience mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in football and it was a good choice because right. I felt... Did it give you really something extra? I mean... It was, uh, you know, I didn't know so well the Mexican championship at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember there were fantastic players like Jorge Campos or uh, Hugo Sanchez right. or uh, other players and I, I remember them but uh, yeah the decision to go there was due to to the fact that I would like to have a different experience in mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. and my wife was open to go uh -huh. And this this was uh, the the basic that uh, the reason because I decided to go also uh -huh. because if my wife didn't said, want to join then want, obviously was, you would consider not possible. to go. So but, but she always support me in every decision. He came with me in Mexico. He, he, she came with me also in in Germany. In Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was. A very different, mm -hmm. quite different situation. But yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, Mexican people compared to German people. <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah, yeah. they're quite different. But you need to be open to, to you know, to yeah. live in every place. Um, obviously, being being a, an athlete, uh, you know, and and uh, you know, just moving from one country to the other, you know, depending on your contract, this is definitely uh, helps you not just to become a cosmopolitan, but to have a, a broader view of things, right? I mean. I, yeah. I suppose it helps uh, when you when you become a coach. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You need to have, just like I always say to to my friend, to people, to my son, to my daughter. In life, the most important thing is uh, try to be open to everybody and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, try to understand the different the differences in the cultures and absolutely try but succeed on respecting every different culture. Mm -hmm. And the more easy way to do this is traveling. If it's you travel and mm -hmm. if you have to live in different places, you need to, to understand and you need to be used to, to right. work in different in environment and to live. Exactly. Because you need, even if you are abroad to work, you have to enjoy the life. Right. Because then at the end of the day, the life is only one. Okay, so andiamo. andiamo. <laughs> if you're not speaking Hungarian, let's speak Italian. <laughs> yes. So I chose this part of the city for this little walk because, uh, you know, I, I thought that 
I don't know if Pozzozzoli is, is a little bit, uh, has this kind of uh, atmosphere. I don't know, it's a more modern or a more uh, traditional no, I think that way. I like very much As Pozzoli. It looks? Uh -huh. Absolutely, it's an historical city. Pozzoli has uh, the second bigger amphitheater, amphitheater wow. uh, of the history. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Everyone thinks after after Colosseo, Colosseo. Yeah, Everyone thinks that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say that Colosseo is, is the only one, but Italians have it seems like many more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this part of the city is really nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do you like this kind of feelings? A little bit of the um, yeah, medieval yeah, yeah. ages, you know, this traditional architecture, this style. I like very much. I came several times to visit also to enjoy the atmosphere that there is here mm -hmm. with the castle mm -hmm. and also in this street. I like very much this part of the yeah. city. Uh, do you have a favorite city, a favorite place in the world after so much traveling? Or home uh, is home? <laughs> I, I like very much to stay, to stay at home when, when, but you know, I was born in the north of the, of the country in Italy. Right. I'm living now in the south, that is not really my, the city is mm -hmm. not really my city. Mm -hmm. So, but I, in general, I'm living, I'm feeling myself comfortable in many, many places. And one of these for sure is Budapest. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I've heard this very nice story that there was this young, talented football player in Pozzoli who wanted to uh, buy a ticket uh, and went into a travel agency and a beautiful young woman, <laughs> uh, basically yeah. they, they had the counter, their eyes, their look, and yeah. it was the moment, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was in, <laughs> and Mariella, yeah. ever since yeah. your your partner some, in life, your some wife. years ago. <laughs> How many? Uh, we are talking about uh, eighty-seven. 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 So we we get wow. married after two years, and now. What we a are nice almost... engagement! It's really, I mean, really, uh, this is a very very strong bond between you, right? Yes, yes, we are together since. Since really a lot of time, mm -hmm. we were we were much more than children when we met, mm -hmm. and uh, a little from that moment we 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 were and we stay always together, supporting each other in the in the just like you know the price said in the difficult and right. moment in the in the, <laughs> in the best one. Yeah. Exactly. If it was the morning, which is not anymore, <laughs> then I would say, let's go and have a cappuccino and un brioche. <laughs> <laughs> una brioche. <laughs> una brioche, what Italians usually have for breakfast. But this is, uh, this is the early afternoon, we can tell to the, our, our viewers. So anyway, we can have a coffee. I don't okay. know if it's gonna be as good as you would get in Italy, but let's give it a try. We will, we will see. <laughs> a coffee or a cappuccino or a... You know, one, okay, I don't... <laughs> one espresso is okay. One espresso, right? Yes. Now, okay, this is the, the topic that I wanted to talk about. So why do Italians say this is crazy to drink a coffee with milk after noon? Because, uh, first of all, <laughs> we are not used to drinking this way. First. <laughs> Second, on the other end, we have to say that the milk together with the coffee make your digestion much, much, much more difficult oh, because okay. the milk together with the coffee mm. they just so don't go together so if after lunch or mm -hmm. in the afternoon you would like to drink coffee you have to drink pure coffee pure coffee that's a rule yeah okay can i break the rule today yeah sure you can do what you want <laughs> you, the reason why because i didn't have lunch so <laughs> in that sense maybe i can have yeah. a coffee with milk okay yeah. so you you are uh, you're not as cautious about your your uh, nutrition anymore obviously but uh, no, i try to feel to to, to follow for sure uh, the, the the indication regarding mm -hmm. the good health and you the right way yeah, you're in excellent shape. I mean, no, no, I have to lose <laughs> some kilo. You have so, to. Yeah, Who yeah. says that, Mariella? How you believe? Uh, Mariella, Mariella, but because she is worried about my 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 health essentially. Well, so this I mean, is the reason because now 
in this period, generally, we try to find a couple of hours mm -hmm. to work right. with a good rhythm. Okay, so it's just for, for yeah. fitness, not, because not just I for... Cannot, I cannot run due to my knee. That yes. are really yes, I, I not good condition. I understand that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, but I can walk, I can walk, and mm -hmm. we are going to walk a couple of hours when we can find the time. In the city also, because walking in Budapest, on the mm -hmm. Luna, mm -hmm. or inside the downtown is mm -hmm. something special. Yes. And we like very much. So okay. It's so healthy it's and, and, nice and, and fun. At the same time. Yeah, you can you can basically combine the two together. Okay, so cheers. <laughs> we don't cheers. say that with Egy coffee. <laughs> okay, your Hungarian is getting really nice. <laughs> <It's very important>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then it's absolutely understandable that a wife takes care of uh, her husband's uh, health, and she is probably very uh, careful and cautious about about uh, cooking. But if you could, what would you choose from the Hungarian cuisine, from the Hungarian uh, meals that are really typical? Hungarian? There are many things that I like. One, for sure, I like uh, very much all kinds of soups. Mm -hmm. That in Hungary generally. Gouyash soup and bean soup. All these kinds of mm -hmm. soups. And also the soups that generally in uh, summer, mm -hmm. the cold soup, I like. Also. Okay. Uh -huh. Then I like for sure the cordon bleu that is no, all over the world. <laughs> yes. <but laughs> in Hungary, it's done above all in some place uh, in a really special way. I like purkled. Perkult, <laughs> nice. I like. Uh, <laughs> like Perkult made of what? Of uh, of uh, beef or uh, of uh, pork, whichever. Everything. Everything. I okay. like very much the <laughs> cheese fried. We have already mentioned your dear wife Mariella, but uh, Simone, your dear son, he is a fantastic water polo player, right? Yeah, he's a he's a water polo player. He's a he's a good good uh, player for sure. Is playing now in Ortigia. Now mm -hmm. they are coming. They yesterday they played the last match in the bubble of Rome. There is okay. also this bubble of Budapest. Yes. I will go. I will go afterward to watch uh, Fradi against Brescia. Mm -hmm. I, I'm invited by <laughs> Norbert, the sport director, Norbert Catona, the sport director mm -hmm. of Fradi. I like very much water polo. And I know that you also have a good relation with Tomasz Mertz, who was the, the runner-up in yeah. the best uh, uh, coach Tommy, of the year, yeah. right? Tommy is an, an unbelievable nice person, <laughs> and I like him very much. We, 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 have no, we, we, have not, we have no chance to meet each other mm -hmm. recently, but uh, we are planning to meet soon. I know that you have also some respect for the Hungarian water polo players, not just absolutely, the current absolutely. ones, but... Are, are between the best in the world, <laughs> if not the best. Uh, their history. I, I met uh, several times uh, Kemeni. Mm -hmm. He won the Olympic Games three times. In a row. In a row. In so a row. <laughs> it's something <laughs> that nobody can reach <laughs> in every sport. So it's because, you know, mm. the, the quality of the Hungarian water polo is absol absolutely on the top of the world, you right. can say. Right, yeah. Oh, and, and I know. I cannot say that I know all the players. Right. I know who they are. Okay. I like very much the most, imp according to me, but this is my the opinion of, of someone that is not a specialist. Okay. But I like very much Denis Varga. Denis Varga. <laughs> I like very much his mm -hmm. style, his way of being, also in the in, in the way in which he is interpreting mm -hmm. the match. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he look like not worried about the match, yeah. but then suddenly. He's, he's just something <laughs> <size>. sparkles. <laughs> I like very much the, the him. I like very much the Hungarian water polo and the national team. I support them. I like very much the style. My son always say to me, the Hungarians are the number absolutely the, the number one in the world mm -hmm. in in the way in which they they are attacking. Okay. More than defending, okay. attacking. Attack. Well, this is you know, the, probably, uh, the more visible, you know, the, the, uh, the I would say, the, the defense. Yeah. Yes, it, and it looks looks really nice on, in, yeah. in the water. Great. Coffee? Was it okay? Perfect. Ca uh, I mean, you. can we, can we a little bit, you know, just match up to the Italian style a little bit? Yeah, we are close. Clo we are close. <laughs> <laughs> now we are getting to 
our final point of our uh, meeting today and this is a very nice and emblematic point of, uh, of Budapest, uh, the fisherman's bastion, yeah. which I chose for a certain reason, which I will tell you. But before we get there, just uh, we haven't talked about your daughter, Gaia. <laughs> She's a communicational expert, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. She, she is going to be graduated in the next mm -hmm. month, I think. Yeah. Before June, mm -hmm. she will be graduated. So she will be doctor in communication. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's basically something that she could, she could be teaching after that. Fantastic. What about sports? Uh, she like uh, she likes the sport of the of her brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, she Water likes polo. football, water polo, football. But the sport that she likes more is shopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shopping for yeah. young ladies. That's absolutely true. You're right. <laughs> okay. Well, I can I can tell that you're also not just a loving but a critical father, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> to be honest, yes. I'm really critical with my son and my daughter. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Is it is important for, for, for you and also for them to, you know, to have some certain values that you emphasize? Yeah, I think that is, uh, is important for mm -hmm. their development, mm -hmm. that uh, they could understand and even if they don't appreciate every time what I'm what we are going to say to them because you know from our point of view uh, sometimes the things are that they are going to do are, are not really right <laughs> so we are critic but this is always something that the father and mother are doing in order to make the life of uh, their son or their daughter easier as possible in the okay. future. This is so it has actually a reason to be a little bit critical to sort of develop them, to, you know, to form them, to sculpt them in a way, which is also, of course, very nice. Okay, well, we are heading to a very uh, nice point. Uh, and uh, you already told that this is gonna be at least in March, a difficult era because you probably need to leave out uh, and you cannot count on uh, Dominic Sobosley, mm -hmm. which is probably, I don't know how, what a, what a big loss uh, or what a, uh, how much you will uh, miss him, you know, from your team uh, because uh, as we could see, he can be a, a match deciding player. Yeah, sure. Dominic is in this moment. I think the most uh, valuable player in our team is the not just a, not, not just a, actually the I would say the most expensive but the most valuable <laughs> in a way. No, I mean <laughs> because he's uh, okay now he's signed for Leipzig when he's yeah. going in a to sell, selling value uh, obviously yes. When he's going to play together with Peter Gulacci and mm -hmm. uh, and Willy Orban? Yes. But sure, under the technical point of view, he is uh, at the moment is celebrated like uh, one of the most important, maybe mm -hmm. the most important player that we have. And uh, yeah, is uh, is important for us absolutely. I always say that the qualities of the players are something that cannot be missed, and in this case, we will miss the quality of Sobosley of Dominic. But we hope. To, to be able to find a solution just like happened in the autumn, in the previous autumn season, in which we had to face many, many, you know, difficulties, st strange <laughs> situation with the players, <laughs> with the missing players. And uh, we, we succeeded on managing in the right way. So. I'm sure you have the plan for that as well. So the reason why I wanted to come here to show you also a very emblematic point of this city. From here you can see the Pushkash Arena. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to close our, uh, basically our conversation here because this is going to be, you know, the, pla the place, uh, the very important place of your, of your uh, uh, head coach career. 
with the Europeans, with the Euro 2020. Two major matches will be against probably one of or two of the best uh, European uh, uh, teams uh, against France and Portugal. Yeah. So how can you prepare for that and what is your basically your expectations at all in that sense when you're looking at there to to see and to to prepare uh, for the Euro 2020 knowing how important it is for the Hungarians to have the squad at the Euro 2020 at the European Championships but you know facing probably the strongest teams that you can find in Europe yeah yeah uh, everybody say that our group is the Iron group, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> probably thanks to France, Portugal, and Germany. <laughs> Not thanks to us, but you are, we are we are humble enough to understand that is absolutely real. To be honest, if I have to say to you the truth, okay, Let please not, tell me. <laughs> I'm not thinking in the European Championship now. Not I, yet. I'm thinking in the World Qualifiers. Okay. Because I'm used to think. Step by step. Step by step. Mm -hmm. Also because, like I mentioned before, you never know <laughs> you never which know. will be your future. It's, it's a risky job. Yeah, <laughs> it's all in football, so I'm focused on the, on Poland and afterwards on San Marino and, and Andorra. For sure, we know against who we are going to play, but we will start on thinking more seriously after the March matches. Okay, well of course at this very moment there are so many uncertainties which we don't know what is going to be with the pandemic, whether uh, you know spectators can be placed uh, in the arena, but if you could wish what you would actually really like to see in uh, the beginning of June when the Hungarian squad is, is going to be uh, entering the Pushkash, what, what would you imagine in your, in your in, in your dreams. I know you, you talk about reality, but now just let's forget it now and let's, let's dream a little. I would like to live the same environment, the same atmosphere that I lived in 2016 when I was only the coach of Omved and, okay. and I was only a supporter of the Hungarian national team. Okay. But I remember very well the, the environment. I remember the flag in almost all the cars. I remember people <laughs> walking in the street with the flags painted on, there, on, on the, the faces. faces. So it so was something was... really, really amazing and I would like to live the same sensation. <laughs> like in this case, I could be a little bit more, you know, important in the... In the now you would definitely play a more important not role in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, not only like a spectator, <laughs> not, not just a supporter, but like actually. A, one of the character of this exactly, show. Exactly, exactly. So if I could wish you something, uh, finishing 2021, I would wish you to be running again for the best coach of Hungary title. That would mean that it was a fantastic year. So that's what I wish you. Thank you so Thank much. you very much, <laughs> but I have to recognize that the Hungarian people and the Hungarian sportsmen and women are on the top of the world on many, many <laughs> disciplines, sport disciplines, yes. and uh, we can see clearly and easily in every Olympic Games where, yeah, but, where but, Hungary is always right. in the first ten if the, of the medal, you know. So, I mean, it was... Uh, the fact that I was elected best coach of, of Hungary was just due, due to the fact that many things work all in all and also because football is, is the most uh, popular, popular sport. sport. Yeah, but in the same time, I'd say in a year like this, when we are supposed to have the Olympics in the summer and also these major events, if you're going to be running for the best coach of the year title, that means that the Hungarian national football team did really well in 2021. So that's what I wish you. Thank you very much Thank you for very your time much, again. Please. All the best for you in the upcoming matches and uh, all the best. A Csisztus Podcast producere és műsorvezetője Csisztus Zsuzsa, szerkesztője Kovács Orsolya, stábigazgató Molnár Géza. Köszönjük a stylingot Mihály Parisnak, a sminket Horváth Adrának, a frizurákat Szekeres Krisztának. A műsor támogatója a Sheriti, a Guess Hungary, a Primus Labor és a Párizsi Udvarhotel Budapest.